Hey guys, it's another month, which means it's time for my monthly Blu-ray DVD collection update. Um, got a couple of Blu-rays and a handful of DVDs. Not a huge update this month, um, but as the past has dictated to me, if I put it off to do a bigger update after a couple of months, then I just wind up pushing it off and pushing it off and pushing it off. And then, you know, I wind up, like, losing it. So I figure if I just do it monthly, even if it's just a small update, at least I'm doing it, I'm keeping consistent. And, um, yeah, all that kind of fun stuff. So we're going to get right into it. Uh, to start off, we've got a couple of DVD uh, TV seasons, um, both for the same show. So the first season is The Golden Girls Season 4. Um, this is a show that my wife really loves watching. Um, we were looking for these seasons for a while. We've got the first two seasons. Um, unfortunately, Walmart did not have the third season, which is actually the one that we need next. Um, and funny, kind of annoying story at the same time. The shelf had these listed as $15 a piece. So I kind of put them off because we got the first two seasons for like 10 so we were kind of hoping that they would like come down in price maybe. And I finally went, you know what, I want to get her the uh, the fourth season. So I just kind of went, you know what, whatever, it's $15, I'll get her the fourth season. At least she's got another one. Scanned it out and it was actually 10 So I went back and got her the fifth season of Golden Girls. And went back to get her the sixth and the seventh and they were all sold out. So, or maybe they weren't sold out, but they, like, they changed their, um, their end cap where they had all of this stuff. I think it was, like, um, like a Mother's Day promotion, like, Mother's Day movies on for sale. Just not advertised as Mother's Day. And now it's, like, more action movies, so I'm guessing they're kind of, like, pushing for Father's Day. Um, my Walmart kind of really sucks for DVDs and movies. Like, they've got, like, a lot of the new releases, but, like, in terms of, like, cheap movies, there's, like, nothing. There's a Walmart um, maybe half an hour north of where I live in the same city, and they've got like a $8 Blu-ray bin, and my Walmart that's like a 10-minute walk from here does not have that. I'm very disappointed. So, but yeah, so I was able to at least get two seasons of Golden Girls for my wife. I enjoy watching it, too. Um, it's sassy. It's, it's actually a lot more like... Um, I really know what the word is, but there's just like there's a lot more humor in it that's like geared towards um, like bold genders. Like when I first saw this, I thought, like, oh, it's just like for mid mid aged ladies doing their thing, and like that's not appealing. But I've actually watched some of it, and it's very entertaining. So yeah, that's uh, the first two that I picked up: seasons four and five of Golden Girls. This next DVD. <laughs> um, if you saw it on my Instagram, you kind of already know about this, but if you haven't, um, this one really shocked me when I found it. So, you can't really tell because it's unfortunately missing the slipcover, but it is, if I open up the case here, it is Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, the Criterion Collection Edition. Let me just see if I can focus this up a bit. Uh, there we go. So yeah, it's Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, Criterion Collection. It's a two-disc set, and it has the book insert that Criterion Collection films typically come with. I found this at a thrift store, and it had no price on it. And um, uh, I saw this movie, I want to say eight or nine years ago. I got it up from the library, this exact edition, like the, the Criterion edition. Didn't know anything about Criterion at the time. Just knew that I liked getting the two-disc sets. Went looking and looking and looking for this thing. Could not find it. Gave up. Went online and looked and discovered, you know, found out about Criterion. Discovered that they're really expensive. And, um, you know, like I think this one was going for, like, at the time it was going for, like, 50 or maybe even $60. Depending on, like, where you were looking. I just looked up, looked it up recently, and I think on Amazon it's going for forty-three dollars, and the Criterion website itself I think is going for about thirty-five. Um, 
So yeah, I saw this at a thrift store. It had no price on it. Most of their movies were like $3 a piece. Um, some of the like box sets, like the TV seasons, were like $6 to $10 a piece, depending on uh, what the series was. And um, then there was this one just sitting there without a price tag. So I was kind of like, are they going to like price it a little higher because it's like it's thick? You know, are they going to think it's like a box set? Are they going to think it's like multiple movies? I wasn't 100% sure, so I took it up to the counter. I'm like, you know what? Even if it's like six bucks, it's still a lot cheaper than like to try and get it off of like a website or something. And uh, I mean, like, it's a Criterion Collection thing, so yeah, even six bucks is like worth it. Put it up to the counter. The guy looks at it, and he's kind of flipping it around, trying to find the price tag. I'm like, yeah, I couldn't find a price tag, and he kind of looks at it and he goes, a eh, dollar? And I'm like, yes, yes. And like, like I I got it, and I'm like pretty much like sprinting out of the store and my wife's like behind me like hang on like hold on like wait for me and just in the back of my head I just heard like run like you stole it because it was just like this was a literal like not a literal steal but like this was just in terms of price this was an absolute steal it was a dollar for a Criterion Collection two disc thing that I've been looking for for so long and then just gave up on it um like i said it's unfortunate it doesn't have the slip cover that has like all the details and like even the title and the fact that it says criterion right here but just i don't even care man like it's just a dollar for this i oh man my knees felt so weak and i was just like yeah i just i couldn't believe that this was that cheap and yeah so if anybody has ever second guessed thrift stores they've clearly gone to the wrong thrift stores because I find a ton of stuff at secondhand stores and thrift stores and I love it so anyways that's uh, my take on fear and loathing or actually my take on fear and loathing is it's a bizarre bizarre movie um, it's a great performance from Johnny Depp it's from uh, Terry Gilliam who's done like Monty Python 12 Monkeys Brazil um, very surreal director this is a very surreal movie um, I remember the first time I watched it, the movie, it ended, and I was kind of, what was the point of that? But I, now that I've got a, got a better handle on, like, really, like, surreal movies and stuff, I kind of, I've been really wanting to re recheck this one out, so the fact that I found this was already kind of cool, but, yeah, the Criterion Collection, I can't stop gushing about that. Um... So yeah, that's uh, that's my take on Fear and Loathing. I really look forward to giving this one a second go-through. So now we're going to go on to the Blu-rays. There's only three here, so we'll uh, we'll make this fast. Uh, the first one is obviously the biggest release of the month and one of the biggest releases of the year, and that is Marvel Studios' Black Panther. Um, I saw this movie twice in theaters, was not actually planning on it, um, to see it twice. Not that I didn't like it or enough or anything, I just wasn't planning on seeing it twice. But I wound up seeing it twice. The second time it was just as good as the first one in first time. In fact, it might have even been better. Um, so I look forward to uh, giving the Blu-ray a, uh, a second go. But yeah, this was a great, um, a great film. Uh, Chadwick Boseman gives an excellent performance as T'Challa. Um, all the side characters are really good. This is um, one of the best Marvel villains, everybody keeps saying. I found him really good. I found his motives were a lot more detailed than some of the typical Marvel movies. I feel like a lot of the Marvel villains are more power-hungry just because the plot dictates them to be power-hungry, and I felt there was a, a very clear motive behind Killmonger, and he had, like... He had a detailed mission, and, like, it wasn't just, I just wanted to be evil for the sake of being evil. Like, he had a, a goal, he had a purpose, and I really liked that about him. Um, like I said, all the side characters, Okoye, um, Shuri, I cannot remember what Lupita Nyong'o's character was called. Uh, anyways, um, all did fantastic jobs. I really loved Andy Serkis in this as, um... Ulysses Claw he reprises his role from uh, Age of Ultron, but yeah, just a, a a great film, very entertaining. I will say that some of the action scenes could have used a little bit of work. The uh, the standard third act climax action was a little typical of like these Marvel movies, like a lot of explosions, a lot of like 
CGI and stuff. The My favorite fights, however, have to be the waterfall fights. Um, there's two of them. There's the one with uh, um, T'Challa going up against M'Baku at the beginning where they're kind of like introducing like the uh, the concept of like challenging for the throne. And then, of course, there's the uh, T'Challa versus Killmonger fight at the waterfall for the throne. I really liked those scenes. I thought they were a lot more... Um, more powerful than, like, the final fight scene, which basically looked like I was watching a video game. Um, but yeah, I also really loved the world of Wakanda. I thought it was very immersive. I thought it was well-detailed. I found it was very rich. And uh, it really helped. It made... Wakanda itself was almost a character um, all on its own. So I was really impressed by this, and... Uh, I'm glad to have this added to my collection, and now all I need is Infinity War when it comes out, and I'll have all of the Marvel movies. Uh, the next Blu-ray is another thrift store find. This was at a different time, different thrift store. But I saw it, and I was like, I gotta pick it up. And it was really funny, because I had just been looking at the trilogy of this on Amazon, like, the night before. And, unfortunately, it's not the trilogy, it's just part two of the, of the series, but... Uh, that is Expendables 2. Um, I really love these movies. They're silly, they're campy, they're really dumb, but they are a lot of fun. They've got a great cast of action heroes. Um, and I honestly think the second one is my favorite out of all three of them. Uh, I really like the first one, but I found it got a little too, um, too involved in its story, whereas this one kind of like took itself less serious it just went for the more goofy action and uh the one-liners the campiness and really what like the 80s action movies were all about um so i i, I preferred i prefer this one over the first one or the third one anyways and the third one was okay but it they made it pg-13 to um appeal to a mass audience and i think that that kind of took away from uh the whole point of this was was like to be like one of those like hardcore 80s action movies and they like dumbed down the violence they dumbed down the language they dumbed it down to pg-13 and kind of defeated the purpose of it this needed to be like this franchise was like built on those hard r 80s action films and they announced that they're doing a fourth one and i'm just kind of like based on like the first film was violent and had a lot of crass language. This one was just violent. They took out the crass language. The third one, they dumbed down the violence and they took out the cr the crass language. So now I'm thinking that the fourth one, they're just going to be shooting each other with Nerf guns. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I found this. I think it was like three bucks. And at first I saw it, I just saw the spine and I was like, oh, cool, Expendables 2, whatever. But then I noticed that it was shorter than the, uh, the DVDs and I realized that it was a Blu-ray. And I'm like, okay, now I want to, now I want this, so... It actually had the di the uh, the digital copy code inside of it, but I don't know if it works or not because I already had a digital copy of this. So uh, yeah, I don't know if it's actually any like if it's worth it, like worth trying or not. So, but I don't need to. So yeah, that's uh, Expendables two. And then the last Blu-ray I found um, at <laughs> at the grocery store of all places. For five dollars, and the only time that I've seen it was when this movie came out, and it was at Walmart, and they wanted twenty dollars for it, and I passed on it, and I'm very glad I did, because now I got it for five, and that is Colossal with Anne Hathaway. This movie was incredibly impressive. Um, the trailers do not do this movie justice. Um, the trailer makes it look like it's a very silly comedy very goofy um but there is a very dark emotional core to this film and i was very impressed by that and thankfully um somebody had seen this before i did and they told me that they're like you know you have you seen the trailer for colossal right and i'm like yes and they're like okay don't go in with the expectation that the trailer gives you because it is not like that so I already kind of had that mindset going in, so I knew not to expect, like, a lot of comedic stuff to it, but, um, and I'm very glad for that, because this movie, I think I would have been more disappointed, because it's not, it's not a comedy-based film, it's a, it's a drama, it's a character piece, it just kind of happens to have this, like, sci-fi monster element, and it does have comedic moments to it, for sure, 
but um, it is by no means a straight up comedy like The Hangover or um, Ace Ventura or something. This is very this is very serious. This is a very emotional film, and um, I'm very very happy that I was able to find it on Blu-ray. Um, there are unfortunately no bonus features. I know it says special features right there. Again, let me try and tighten that up here. Um, okay, I can't. Um, it just says the U.S. cut of the film, and then there's also a, uh, a poster inside, which is kind of cool. I'm not going to show it because it technically has a kind of spoiler to it, and then I'm not going, I don't want to spoil it for you. I unfortunately saw this poster before seeing the movie, so I kind of already had that knowledge going in that something was, something wasn't right, so I'm not going to show off the poster in case anybody hasn't seen it. But definitely, definitely if you're a fan of, like, character pieces that kind of have some comedy and have like this like quirky side to them definitely check out colossal if you haven't i highly recommend this film it was one of my favorites of last year even though i didn't see it until like february of this year <laughs> but i definitely will call it one of my favorite movies of 2017 so that is it for this update um like i said again it's a, a short quick update but uh want to keep these things consistent so uh, thank you for watching don't forget to look forward every Tuesday for another video and also don't forget to subscribe if you yourself are jonesing for film <laughs>